a lot of emotion. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the International Nine Ball Open. Thank you. Thank you so kindly. This event is produced by Pat Fleming, and it originates right here in the Simonis Aramith Arena at the Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel in Norfolk, Virginia. As befitting the name of this event, it's truly international. 112 players have come here from 27 different countries around the world to vie for this prestigious title. Only one person could be the first time winner of this event, and we can't wait to see who that is on Saturday. And we appreciate everybody being with us. Before I introduce our players, I'd like to take another opportunity to say thank you to our three major sponsors, Simonis, Aramith, and Diamond, for all they've done not only to support this event, but to support professional pool worldwide. Lastly, certainly not least, we want to thank each and every one of you out there that have been with us all week and hopefully will be with us for the rest of the week, and those of you that have come here to watch live in person. We appreciate what you've done for the game that we all love so much. Thank you all very, very much. Okay, it's now my pleasure to introduce our players for this 8.30 match, and our first player representing the USA. Three times he has been a member of Team USA's Moscone Cup. He's sponsored by Meucci. Please welcome Skyler Woodward. His opponent is from Chinese Taipei. He's a former Korean nine ball open champion. He's sponsored by Longasi. And please welcome Liu Zhengjia. Thank you very much. Okay, gentlemen, please come and laugh for the break if you would. Your referee presiding over this match from the USA is Mr. Ricky Bryant. Now my pleasure to send it upstairs to the commentary team, Mark Wilson. And oh, excuse me. It's not Danny DiLiberto, but it's one of our favorites, and we're happy to have him with us again. It's Double J, everybody. Jeremy Jones up there in the booth. Thank you. Take it away, guys. Welcome back, pool fans, and the buzz from the last match is still in the air. Great pool calls for great analysis, and we brought in the best in the business for this match. Welcome, Mr. Jeremy Jones. Oh, thank you, Mark. It should be a pretty exciting match here. I know I don't really know the man from Chinese Taipei, but um, I'm, I know he played a great match earlier against Tyler Steyer in the tournament. Pretty flawless. Now, on to the fourth round of the winners, you know he, he plays great. And Skyler played well last night, too. I, yeah, he's I played solid every match, pretty much. So, little tip for you when Skyler gets struggling a little bit if you will get out that country song called Roll On, <laughs> 18 Wheeler. Yeah. No, he really gets going. I'm not kidding you. He's never lost when that music's playing. It's a little so. trigger, huh? Just so you know. I got it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's safe to bet, too, if you put that on. Skyler winning the uh, the lag here, and we I saw a lot of success on the break early in the tournament on this table, and then kind of went away a little bit for some. And then I guess Dennis Grave he just played a one heck of a match in the he, last round, so and broke he so had to have good. broke well, yeah. Right, not so much of a cut break. It was a much lighter cut than what we've been seeing. And he just well, oh, he's making cue two ball, or three cue balls. balls, two or three kisses right there to get a scratch in the upper corner. That's the fortunes of nine ball. You really cannot fault Skyler's effort. No, and, you know, with they, all the players know there's much more uh, opportunity for a scratch, the type of break that's being used as a whole this week, even even with the different variations of the cut that just brings in more of an opportunity, cue ball movement, which opens up them pockets. Get our first chance to see what type of patterns to expect from June. Well, we haven't seen a lot of them, that's for sure, but 
He's a young man, you can tell that, but even at a young age, it seems that the Taiwanese, uh, excuse me, the Chinese Taipei, they, they really uh, are very efficient players overall. Bumping the five ball down to free it up. I believe it does go by the eight, no problem. On the seven, you can see the seven's got the most congestion. So you can't look past this four, five, and six, but that's going to be the main concern of this rack. Probably play to stay well above the seven rather than try to flirt with the eight ball. Yeah, that's going to call for just see what kind of distance he ends up away from it first off. And, oh, my, and again, we can't t take anything for granted. He was pretty shocked by that, too. I actually was looking at the cue ball pattern. I didn't even see uh, All right. the cue ball path. I didn't even see what part of the pocket the five hit. And the boom camera was in my way. I assumed it went in because it was such a routine shot. I don't believe it was anything like a portion of the pocket. Now, this isn't going to fall very nice for, for Sky. This is almost like nowhere to go. If he could get to there, that would be awesome. But to get to there, he's got to really creep it out of that corner with a high left English. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him if he drew down below, knowing that he may mm -hmm. get on something or get on a nice safety. So just because going forward here, you, if you catch that point and kind of stall the cue ball, uh, you could trap yourself. Yeah, yourself, yeah, it's easy to scratch on this ball, too. Yeah, if it just torques a little bit, it, it doesn't take the line, you think, and it'll just kind of spin up the rail and follow the six in, then you kind of look foolish, but it's a very much a possibility. He could play safe on the six, but I really like him drawing back if he's going to play safe anywhere on the seven. Would you ever just uh, chip the six to the end rail there and bring the cue ball? Yeah, that, that's what I was meant. Yeah. yeah, there's a possibility there. That's not a bad move. No, it's not bad. Oh, he was—he had a little more than oh, we thought. Oh, he got a lot too. out of it, but yeah. he really, really uh, was an experienced shot, kind of creeping it out of the corner. That way, the cue ball doesn't do anything unnaturally, uh, kind of warp it on you a little bit with speed. Big shot here. That's going to have to go a little bit. I really like the confident stroke that he applied to that. He wasn't afraid of it. He went right on through the cue ball there. Yeah, and it wasn't an out-of-hand stroke, even though it was something that had some speed on it. Oh, that one skid a little bit. That's going to make the cue ball dive a little more and get him steep on this nine. Cue ball took a little pat. That you could hear the little, little mm -hmm. bit of uh, the noise on the eight. So it kind of pulled a little bit with the cue ball. And Skyler takes advantage of the unforced air. <laughs> and I really like, uh, I know it's just the first game, but I really like uh, the tempo of a swing and the seven ball, especially. A lot of people really kind of hit it really hard trying to go those four rails instead of using that stroke to move the ball. Ricky Bryant's our referee for this event. <clears throat> Outer table action. I see Dennis Orkoa playing. Looks like he's playing Chang. Chang. Yeah. Well, JL Chang, what a match that yeah, is. Yeah, John Celine playing uh, Mika Eminen. You got Josh Roberts and Niels Fan. Jason Shaw, Carlo Piata. Wow. Pet Petri and uh, Rui Sanchez. Who have both been playing exceptional pool, in my opinion. Got to watch quite a bit of two of their matches. Got a close one in the back with um, a kid from Poland, uh, really talented player. Uh, kind of lost his name for a second, but he's playing uh, Johan Shua on a loser side match. It's 10 to 9, Johan. 
Fedora Gorst is playing Joshua Filler. Huh. Two youngsters that are going to be around for a long time. Yeah. 18 and 20. And we have two youngsters here in front of us going to be around for a long time as well. Skyler broke dry. Lou has a shot on the one, but perhaps only to play safe. Yeah, with the two being tied up. Offensively, um, there's a long rail bank where you could draw like into the bottom of the seven, maybe open them up and play safe as well. But other than that, I'm not in love with any offensive shot just because the two is so tied up. I think he chose this route just because he felt like if he nicks the seven uh, in the wrong way, he's opening it up and maybe leave something more than he'd like. So. Right. Not even fool with it. Okay, so Sky's looking at the two seven off the four, if that's kind of some kind of playable. And it's just like I tell people, unless they're lined up like three balls on a combination like lined up, but if there's some cut to mm -hmm. a couple of the balls, I stay away from it just because right. it's very hard to predict once you add that second, that third ball to any kind of combination or combination carom. He's shooting at it, though, so he must like that. And this is... You don't want to go soft. I think you want to hit this with a pretty good pace because otherwise that seven tends to pick up topspin and kind of arc forward on you. Okay, so he needs a little bit of top on the on the seven, so that would be bottom. And now, So he's going to need to hit this with a little top English, in, in my opinion. I don't think it's going to transfer through the second ball that much. I think you don't it's just think it matter? It's just the power. Just speed? This. Yeah. Then it'll be sliding. Uh, yeah, but I think he could hit it with an easier speed if he hit it with high and control with kind of like the two and everything. Great yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. what a horrible kiss on the cue ball. And it's going to freeze and get him straight in. Wow. I don't even know if he can, like, cross the two over now. If you cross the two over, you're crossing over on the nine, which is, like, real dangerous. And there could be a double kiss in there. He may be able to get to the bank the two up towards the four and all that and back up towards the three and just send the cue ball with a little speed at the nine. I think well, he's elevating. Holy moly. Superman shot. And what wow. a hit. What a hit. Makes me want to clap here in the booth. Yeah. What a great shot. Maybe oh, a shot man. of the day. And really getting the most out of everything. I mean, he was elevating everything. He didn't hit that real hard, Mark. Just cueing the ball really nice. Can he hold this one? So you got to go up and down. I ain't going to get there, I don't think. I guess it did. Pull this probably out to the center of the table for the angle on the six, a little bit above it. Could cinch it, just kind of hold. Yeah, it's a nice shot. Caught a little rubber, but I think that's the right shot trying to come out above it. Yeah. Go ahead and commit to the shot that way a little more, too. Pretty big deal. Skyler goes ahead and captures these last three balls because he took advantage of unforced air and then has played extremely well in the rack number two, and that's going to apply some pressure to Lou. Well, one thing that interests me, I wonder if Lou even recognized that 2-7 off the four because he did have a cut shot at the one to be able to maybe get above that those balls, so that may be a little bit of the youth we see. Well, Skyler immediately recognizing uh, something that... You know, yeah. To pot this long one ball, and then I can maybe get out. Very good. 2 0. You can see so much more polish in Skyler's game, too. The last couple of years did him a world of good. Always a straight shooter, always a good breaker, great banker. But 
Here, a little more finesse. Yeah, I really like to watch him when he gets to play a bit of big table for a while and uh, really his stroke lengthens and gets, yeah. a, gets a little more fluid and, and really talented. He gets kind of a bad rap, too, because in the Midwest it's all bar table. It's not like he doesn't want to play big table. He does. Well, that's, but, you know, overall that's a lot of American pool anyways, you know, as far as, like, being able to play and make a living at it. Uh, you can There's some big table tournaments that pay, a, you know, 800 bucks and mm -hmm. 500 bucks, but as far as being able to just play pool, which is what he wants to do, I don't blame him. I bet Mama Woodward is listening in, Deborah Woodward. Oh, I'm sure. How's it going? Yeah, she's hating not being here, I'm sure. Okay, I think he needs a little, there, a little more speed. Just he needs to guarantee that he, know that he meets the requirements for the break break rules so right I think that's huge jump cue out? No. He's got his playing cue, so it feels like he can see a piece. Makes me think he's leveling out and trying to knock this in by the eight. He's got a little bit of room there. Oh, no, he went for the side. Didn't know he could catch that much of it, and a little bit fortunate, leaving it an awfully tough shot elevated over the seven <laughs> to a corner that doesn't look like it has an entire pocket, so... It's almost like this is how it conspires against you. When you miss a routine ball a couple games ago, then the next time you get to come to the table, you're down two games and facing something ugly like this. Right. And this is one to where this is a tough one to make, not having the entire pocket. You can use the rail, but you're hitting downward on the ball, so it pulls it a little more. Wow, what a great hit that was. Holy moly. Yeah, that was clean. He did not let up on that. That was the key. He didn't let it dribble towards the hole. That's why I got such a clean cut on the two ball. That was a shot. Yeah, one heck of a shot. I didn't even think it went. Okay. Pretty nice effort there. I thought he was going to draw above. I, I guess that angle wasn't there. Or he had too much angle to draw above the nine. Pretty smooth, the economy of power falls perfectly on the six. And he'll just put a little high left here, catching two rails, coming right down at the seven. You see just a little flicker of a head motion, though. He kind of lunges forward mm -hmm. just slightly. as Tyler Steyer mentioned how well he did break against him. Nice stroke there. Well, he's clearly a fantastic player. The way he started out on the two ball here was to pass the eight. Two to one. Woodward in front, but Lou will be breaking.
Giancarlo Beata made a mistake in the first game over there against Jason. Not sure he's got to shoot since, really. Now at four nothing. First look at his break. Nine balls on the spot. He made the corner ball. And it's going to be a non compliant break. Right. Nice spread, though, mm -hmm. just in case the four didn't catch both points or went in. It was going to get passed. The one could have went in. After this winter side round is over, we'll be down to eight on the winners. The round of 16 right now. With, let's say about 32 left on the loser side, I believe, somewhere around there. This, this round will complete it down to 32, I believe. to go all the way across, but I think he may have to. I don't know if he can hold it enough. Yeah. May have to end up shooting the five and kind of going into the nine to hold the cue ball for the six. We'll see. He may be able to get the angle to where he can draw back over in between the eight and nine after shooting the five to get on the six. I think he's going fat side of the pocket here. Yeah. Ooh. Overcut it. Yeah. No problem. Had so much low on there, he was able to use the economy of speed. That saved him. But much like you said, he may have to use the nine ball here. I think he's full enough. The thing is, don't overdraw it where it really kind of gets in to where the eight's involved. Just go ahead and let your stroke out coming back and forth. Oh, that's that eight I was a little worried about, but that's okay. That would have been a little bit unlucky. Mm-hmm. At that speed, it's mm -hmm. not likely to bump it. You know, it has to bump it perfect to block you. Now, he could come out and take a little bit more of a shot here with no problem on the seven in that lower left-hand corner where he's standing. Kind of like on the line the cue ball's on yeah. now. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, I kind of like... I, I like than, that myself. I, I like just top spin here or just center ball and just get to the center of the table, not try to get close. Right. Just roll it across, take the shot. And always... that. You, you feel like, well, if I can't make the seven, I'm going to beat this guy anyway. Yeah, and you got to, I like the more of the center ball one. He's going to come all the way back, it appears. Okay, he's come way high, so he's going to have a lot of cut on this seven ball. The thing is, now speed is crucial because he's going to be going. Oh, he can't hold soft enough realistically for the eight in the side. Oh, that's good shot. Okay. I thought it was a little thick, but he got down. And roll on, Skyler Wilbur, 3-1. His way, playing very well. Tell you, Skyler was the biggest bet I ever made in pool. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I was the Moscone Cup captain, and I was told that uh, that wasn't his time. Rookies notoriously fail in the Moscone Cup. I picked him anyway, and he came through big time for us. Yeah, you take him and he loses, you're going to lose your job. Uh. <laughs> but it was the right call. 
So win or lose, it was just the right call at the time. And boy, has he ever blossomed since then. Oh, yeah. And he's fearless. Young kid, he doesn't care. He has fun, enjoys himself. Got a good wit. I like joking around with him. Oh, yeah. Good demeanor. Realistic young man. Knows he's got to work to get better. Okay, he definitely uh, broke the balls really well there. A little bit of an issue with the three, but with the two there, he should be able to manufacture getting on the short side. It may go by the nine. It's close. The three ball. That's what he's looking at now. Yeah. This is one of those circumstances where you, whatever you choose, it's not likely you're going to get hooked, so you can still defend yourself. So if you get in the predicament, you have control of the table, and that's the value of making a ball on the table, uh, on the break. Really, the three must either be super tight or not go at all, and that's why he's inspecting this so much. But he should be able to drop down to where he gets some type of shot on the three, even though it's kind of tight coming across the table, so we'll see. Wanted the thin cut. Uh, he definitely wanted angle. So anytime you need to come into a shorter space, you'd rather have more angle that way. That, that, that gives you a lot more touch coming mm -hmm. across the table because you're hitting the ball easy. So if he's coming like into the eight or into the bottom of the three here, it just doesn't require much. Oh, he went into him firm. Overcut the two ball a little bit. Maybe didn't have as much of his uh, commitment in there. There wasn't the pause. He wasn't slow back and straight through like he had been. Yeah. He the, got a little jumpy. He sure did. But the thing is, the shot made it that way. I think he got thin enough to where he could have opened those balls nicely with a lot less speed. Oh, and a lot of times when you're breaking clusters out, and those weren't stuck together, of course, but you only go into them with, like, moving them like a foot away. You know, you, that way you're in very much control of, of everything. Unless right. you're coming into a real bad side of one of them and you don't want to get snookered on the next ball, something like that. But for the most part, it doesn't take much to open the balls. And the main thing is you keep control, too, because you right. don't miss that ball as much. Right. Okay, he's got a little bit of an angle here. So well, he's, he's shooting this in the corner, it looks he like. He made a nice shot down in that corner just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. Coming right out of his chair. That's got to go a little bit. Got it just a fraction heavy. And now he's going to be stretched with a pretty thin cut on the on the four. And, yeah, the seven really doesn't help it unless you hit it really, really bad. So it doesn't really make yeah. the pocket much bigger. Shooting lefty and not hesitating to do so. Nice shot. So after what was probably the best break of the match so far, Sky Woodward with a prime opportunity made a mistake there on that two ball. This is a little out he's got to pay attention to here, Mark. This little four balls here. Right. He's going to have to end up getting fairly straight on the seven. From where he got on the five, it, you would think, I think he's pounding it out to where he's at now, though, something like that. Trying to. That ain't going to get it. I don't think that's going to get it. For me, I want to be able to make the seven for sure. Yeah, and he could have laid on the side rail. Yeah. Um, I understand how much easier it would be, but he didn't get there, and it was pounding it, and then you had to get below the side pocket two cushions. Right. I would so, rather cinch the seven. Well, he could have gotten up maybe three quarters, three diamonds up on the side rail closer to the seven, two, to where he didn't have to shoot it from a long distance, and he would have had to draw back on the eight, which would right. have been touchy, but you would have had that guaranteed look at the seven. Extension. Yeah, this is definitely a tough circumstance. Looks like the seven is nearly frozen, so 
you can double kiss this. A lot of things can go wrong when you're trying to play safe here. And you can see he's agitated by it. There's nothing routine or I think he's got to kick on top of it and lay on top of it. I don't, I mean, you could kick firm like a one pocket shot and stick the cue ball and possibly snooker him. Um, but I, otherwise, he's just got to kick softly on top of it. I don't think he can do anything else. Oh, that's too much. I think the spin's going to come off, isn't it? Oh, that's no, he did so. well. Nice shot. And now he puts a little bit of heat on Skyler. He keeps a little heat on Skyler. Well, I don't mind just fanning it, just rock it just over to the rail and just let the cue ball go back down table. Well, you got to make sure you don't leave some type of rail first or some type of easy kick to the bottom rail. I like that for sure better. Just because you, the guys are pretty creative kicking to the bottom mm -hmm. rail, moving it up the table and creeping you behind that nine ball. So. Through that, yeah. So a nice play by, by Mr. Lou and then an even better one by Sky. Now, I think this could be maybe two cushions real light on the seven and then let it come to the other side of the nine. Just, no, he's going power. Yeah, he said, let me see if I can get lucky and oh, lucky goodness. right there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so after making a huge mistake on getting snookered, and this guy doing all he could do, Mr. Lou just did a little bit of a thin cut away on the eight. To get to the nine to cut it to three to two. I almost hate calling him Mister because he's so young. <laughs> One thing he's definitely mature in pool years. Mm -hmm. Three two Woodward over Lee. Pretty nice crowd on tap tonight. Let's see Jerry Bresseth out there. Oh, yeah. It's really picked up today. And then, of course, Thursday, Friday, Saturday coming up. It's going to be busy. Chang are tied at two. Yeah, so is Josh Roberts and Niels. Jason Shaw up five to one and has his man snookered. <laughs> we got uh, Salim and Mika. I think it's uh, Salim's up four to two right now, please. Okay, lose break. One ball found the side pocket. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing that would be concerning for me if I was Skyler is that corner ball. He's made the corner ball both times he broke. Now that's huge. Saw that earlier in a match Jason Shaw played where he made the corner ball a lot. Of, he was playing uh, uh, Shane McMahon, as a matter of fact, in the first round of the tournament and ran a lot of racks. Just speed bounced away from the rail straight in on the three. Gonna travel the cue ball about six feet there. Glide this one ahead just a little bit with top spin. Uh, pretty standard kind of run out here. Just a little bit of work here. He got a little thinner here than I thought he might, but maybe he couldn't do much more than that. Still be okay. 
He's gotten a little elevated over the seven. So if he decides to put a little top inside, looks like he's going to go around. That's pretty nice control there, Mark. Mm -hmm. That wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. Made it look easy. I mean, it wasn't a tough shot, but just to have perfect control on the cue ball, you could easily draw the hair too much, catch the eight coming out two rails. You could overhit it. You could underhit it. If you hit the pocket even remotely crudely, yeah. it changes it yeah, dramatically. Exactly, yeah. You know, so you've got to be playing well. He created the angle; it wasn't there. Right. And just a little mild rotation on the cue ball. Those are sometimes harder than the ones you hit the maximum rotation on the cue yeah. ball. So that was a world class run out right there. Three yeah. three is our score. <laughs> really nice shot on the one, drawing into position on the three. With a lot of control, too, because there was some jeopardy there if he overdrew it. Right. Well, we thought this would be a spirited match. And that's one thing Jason Shaw kind of did last year, winning and the year before. Uh, making a run at the U.S. Open it was just kind of taking matches away from, from guys, yeah. and even in this format, which is you feel like four or five game lead, three game lead or whatever is pretty pretty nice, but from the lead, he took matches away, like just ended it early, and from a little bit behind, he took matches away. Pretty impressive. And just as I spoke, he scratched on the break. <laughs> well, you know, one thing that is true is that at this level of play with these great players, three-game lead is, is maybe just one visit at the table. It's not like if you're bad players, it's many, many innings for three games. Oh, yeah, Good for players, sure. Three or four games, two, three games, they could just get clipped off. No yeah, problem. Yeah, very, very easily. But it's, you know. You'd rather be so in as front. A, as usually, though, as the tournament goes along and these types of huge tournament shots after the break sometimes are hard to come by. Right. Uh, you know, it's almost like we always say about Hill Hill. Hill Hill, you rarely ever see the break and run out. Or at least you used to not to. It always used to be a rollout situation or yeah. something's tied up or impossible run out. Now, does he have a look at this, too? I, he can see a portion <laughs> of it, at least. I think he can get at all of it. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. Non compliant. Didn't. Yeah, non compliant break. Don't you love that word? <laughs> He's non compliant. <laughs> Sounds like something the police would say when they arrest you. Nice opening shot, getting the most out of the cue ball, getting it off the rail. I just kind of got to ease this a little bit because he, if he catches the eight a little thin, the three could come up too high. So this would be a pretty mild one, the cue ball just going to the rail. Nice shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, Skyler's pocketing very accurately. He made quite a statement with that elevated cue draw length of the oh, table. Man. Like, holy moly. Like the second game, too. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like he was all heated up. up. Yeah. Should work. That's his choice on which side of the table he'd like to play the five from. Goes to both the lower corner pockets. That's perfect. that right there that too just taking that extra look even if it really doesn't mean a whole lot just kind of mm -hmm. keeps you in check a little bit makes you aware that which we all go through that mode of, of being able to run out and then mess up the last few balls there for a little spell it mm -hmm. just keeps you respecting those last few and the main thing it is it just also keeps your mind trained for the entire match not just letting it wander for a ball or two even if it right. doesn't cost you Right. 
And Skyler regains the lead, four games to three. And just what you said about playing a complete match and not uh, going on holiday, I used to do that. I would I would make a couple hard shots and get one that's routine. I think, okay, I'd just go on vacation. And then the, I'd make it, but then the next ball, I'm a little bit out of line. Now i got to come back with another hard shot. Right, another right, hard shot. right. Which I could do, but it makes you so much more susceptible. And I, I noticed about every fourth ball, I'm shooting a hard shot. And about every seventh ball, Efren's shooting a hard shot. Right, it, right. It just wasn't working out, the math there. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, I tell people you stay in stroke with the easy ones when you commit to the easy ones. Mm. It, you know, you just kind of, like, get you away from labeling the shots also as far yeah. as, like, you really see, uh, like, some shots that aren't that hard all of a sudden get labeled as harder shots because you don't take uh, because you don't focus as much on the easy ones so yeah. you know what I mean it just your mind wanders and gets a little weak I don't even let anyone talk, call them easy shots we'll call them less difficult if you want to but right. if you don't apply yourself you're doing it wrong I probably get that phone call once a week about how the guy was going to win a matching league but uh, he missed an easy shot and once a week everybody's maybe they're not that easy then right it's just like a lot, of, a lot of people at different levels uh, play really well against upper competition but seem to lose focus against people they should beat or at least people they feel like they should beat. Right. It's kind of along the same lines. Well, good power. I don't know if he made anything. I didn't hear anything down. He's given up a shot on the one. The two's fairly open. He's got to direct the cue ball for it, though. I think he's still just getting a look at it out. Is he shooting it? Okay, he is. Just trying to bring the cue. Oh, wow. That was thin. Wow. Now, these balls are just dangerous to play position from. Oh, yeah, well, definitely. And he's on the wrong side of the pocket as far as the easier way to come out. And if he right. was on the side rail, it's a little more controllable. So... Skyler recognizes that it's not easy to wedge the cue ball close to the two. And I think he can catch a portion and come right down towards the six, or he could play real simple and take the longer shot on the two like this, and that's that's what I really like. With the three being very open, um, he can come across and play some type of short side on the three, or he can get back out and play the three past the eight. Kind of what you feel comfortable with on this two ball, to be honest with you. Yeah, he didn't try to do too much with that, and that was the key. He took the angle, and just to be on the angle, even if it's a little longer shot. Yeah, and just like earlier, uh, anytime you're coming out of the pocket, even when it's not so deep, you really have a, it's a lot better just coming out a little easier with a little more control uh, rather than a little more speed. You seem to hit the line you want way more often. Right. So a lot of times you're sacrificing a little distance on your next shot, but that's okay. All right, big shot there. It's got to go. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't really get through it, though, like he normally does with the, mm -hmm. the good top English stroke. Kind of glanced off the three a little more than I think he thought he would because he went really close to the seven yeah. as well. Yeah. Mercifully, he didn't graze the seven, or that would have changed it quite a bit. Now, is he going to try and pull this two rails with a low right, or is he going to hit it with a high right and go two rails in between the six and the eight with the cue ball, falling down for the five? I'll tell you, I don't know what he's going to do, but I do know with the extension, when you try to pull this and pinch you it around, You can hit it it's, fat. Oh, oh, with the extent, that's exactly what I was about to say. With that extra weight, it really makes the cue ball deflect more, so you have to aim away from what you normally would uh, without the extension. So if he misses this, no, he's hitting a high ball, so more natural. So he should be okay. And that's the way you hit it again, though, because you put right English on it, a hair of right English. So it makes the cue ball deflect a little more with that yeah. extra weight. I think sometimes the extension emboldens you, and then you forget the component that you described, where you get that little extra squirt in there, mm -hmm. and then this is the result. Personally, I'd rather see guys get better with the bridge. Right. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
Uh-oh. You better say something Came to that one. Oh, it's yeah. going to be okay. It was out of his control, though, when he yeah. gets that close. So, Sky, uh, two consecutive times to have a chance to extend his lead back to two games. A little bit of a fumble, miss on the two earlier, and then uh, catching that six ball out, coming out, made that four ball really tough. <laughs> Remember that one ad they used to have for the PGA golf, and it was like, these guys are good. <laughs> That's the way I feel at this tournament. <laughs> these guys are good. Yeah. Great pass and great focus, intensity, good strokes. Yeah, this is a real pool match here. 4-4. Four, four. Considerably, and Scott's playing real steady at 837. Uh, we should be a lot better than that after just a couple misses. He's made some incredible outs and mm -hmm. some really nice shots. So, yeah, that's going to change. <laughs> yeah, I don't see a, like a, a problem there or anything. It's just a couple of things got away from him. And Carlo Beato making a big comeback over there at 6 4 now, winning three in a row. He's cut him quite a bit lighter and quite a bit of cut. Making the corner ball, but threatening not to meet the demands of the break rules. So. Right, right. He's been non compliant twice. Right. But making the corner ball, which I think is huge, I'll tell you that. He right, missed it that time. He tried to add a little more speed, too. I wonder if that's on his mind as far as not being compliant. And now he's going to have to shoot, I believe. I don't think Try it was. A, yeah, well, I think it was not compliant again, so he can make him shoot. Don't believe the four ball got past the head string, so. And you are correct. Going airborne. you'll see it but you may see a 1-9 possibility here I mean he should really play safe I believe got to try and the balls are open so pretty risky on the combination mm -hmm. you're on the rail it's not really natural by any means I understand today's safety is weird because the jump cue and certain things if you really can't bury your opponent you feel like yeah. uh, we have the overhead if we get the overhead real quick this is the shot I like is bring the cue ball down here and just rub that one ball over here. Well, he's going to use his talent going for this combination. And, wow, he, great. and he rolled it, too. How sweet was that? I Keeping like the that accuracy in the shot. <laughs> That's a better shot. 5-4, Skyler Woodward. <laughs> he smiled, up, shaking his head. It went right in, so it made it seem like it was easy, but it was not easy. Well, one thing I'll tell you, which is hard to do, is what I like. He kept a, he said, well, I'm going to keep the accuracy in this shot. I'm not just going to blast at it and just hope it goes in. I'm going to give my best effort hitting it with a mild speed. And, boy, he sure hit it well.
Schuyler breaking, leading. So really, the non-compliant break has cost Lou two or three times already. Uh, three times, I believe. I'm not sure it cost him all three games. I know it cost him at least two of them, though. Right. Okay. Tagged him pretty square. And he got the two to go kind of on the path a lot of the guys are thinking of when they're trying to cut and make that one. So he's in a situation here to where he could play safe because the cue ball is going to have a lot of speed and a real difficult shot on the two. I'm not sure what I like as far as safety. Yeah, from this range and then the, clutter, the volume of clutter there for either the two ball or the cue ball. I don't think he can just level out and bank the two to what would be his, or his right side rail over here kind of floating the cue ball towards the seven and all that. I think it's close to a scratch where it go right in between mm -hmm. the six and the seven and scratch. So nothing natural about that. You can kind of shoot the two in between the nine five, but it's not so great either. Whatever he chooses, it's there's nothing easy here. He's going to float towards this corner over here with a cue ball, I believe. Trying, oh, great shot. Great shot. And that was definitely what he was trying as far as the cue ball back on the 8-5. Really good shot from that range. And really taking a, really a smart path anyway. The two stopped right there, but he kind of figured the two wouldn't get away from him. And if he didn't get the hook, at least the two may get another hook behind the seven mm -hmm. or the six or any of those balls. So pretty That's crafty. Yeah, something new been added to Skyler Woodward. That wasn't the dimension that he's had in the past. <laughs> he's smartened up. That's the thing when you when you're a powerful shot maker like he is. Sometimes you just go after him, and sometimes it works out. But I think now he's learned percentages. Yeah, like some guys used to say, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get smart another time. I'll do that later. Yeah. I'll just use my talent for a good while right. until until things change a little bit, and then I'll start learning the game. So, Look at this guy. He's earned ball in hand from that shot, too. It's powerful. One game lead, he's got ball in hand. Yeah, that was Can a little he... bit of an unforced error. That, that He shouldn't have missed that, uh, that kick shot. Now, is he going to try and rub the five right here? Yeah, he wants to develop that for sure because there's no sense... Not that. It goes in the other corner, though, now. He needs to make sure he does not get elevated here on the on the eight, like so. That could be the problem. Yeah, that, that's why that shot there was a little sticky, because now you got to ease this three in the side over a ball. Okay, he got a little left side of the cue ball, so that's going to help a lot. But now he's really floating towards it. Oh, he drew it. Nice shot. That's hard to do beside a ball, Mark. He put speed on the yeah. cue stick whenever you're beside it, all ball fouls. Well, he's rearranged the furniture now, and everything looks like it's on center of the table. Very good. Now get a little more pull on this than just coming straight across. Make sure you get the draw on it. That's the key, because you can handle anything from above. Don't flirt with the side pocket and don't flirt with getting on that rail over there. Kind of goofy. In a goofy spot. So. Looks like he's just going to check it up. And that's the shot on the TV table that you really have to develop. Is that little side spin kill shot. Mm -hmm. Because the pocket's pretty big at that speed. And you can really hold a lot of angles rather than trying to go back and forth. His time goes over and checks the angle he wants on the eight. Realizes he's going to have to shoot the nine from down the table a little further to be comfortable. Well, if he comes out to the center, he's, that's what I would, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's got to go a little bit. Should be fine. There's a lot of room there. Oh, great shooting. Yeah, now it's got that two-game lead back. Opened the match with a 3-1 lead and then got caught. And has had a one-game lead two other times. We'll get a look at that tracker here in a little bit, I'm sure. Yeah. 
guy has got his TPA up over 850, which is our benchmark for pros at 868. Pushing the pace, playing a very up-tempo game, very confident game. Keeping the pressure on Lou. Shout out to our fans in London, Bevor. We hear you. Great to have you on board. Love to be productive on the break and get a shot here. And he's making balls. He's not always getting a shot. He's making balls for the most part, though. Adding a lot of speed. One ball so dunked right two, in. Here comes the two. Traction. Going on its spot. And it's, it's been there a lot this match, I'll tell you that. Yeah. That exact same spot or real close to it. To go ahead and let a stroke out and come back a couple rails at the four passes the eight it appears so it's all about getting on this three it's got plenty of angle again so don't overhit it he had a two ball he kind of overhit earlier that's much better if he gets a little bump it's usually going to be all right <laughs> bunch of open pockets he's smiling Skyler has fun. He's kind of got the Alex Pagulian attitude of pool. He actually enjoys playing pool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see it in the way he plays, the energy he brings. All right, so now he's gotten there. He can't go forward for that angle. He's going to have to draw back on the four, try and get a little bit more of an angle on the five. Okay, though, the six is very accessible, so middle of that left side. Yeah, just anywhere over there, he can pull the cue ball in between the, the five and the eight, a couple rails, catching a third rail for the six, so keep it simple. Yeah, that should be plenty. And I'll just swing his ball. Oh, he's hitting high. Wow, I'm surprised he's not pulling this. need a bump and it didn't get it yeah I'm really surprised he didn't pull that with low low outside and and just come you know a diamond and a half middle diamond almost below the side for the six in the in the right corner but. yeah hard to criticize but going that route this very thing could happen yeah, he's, he's got to edge it from the other side, I believe, right, but he's, he may right. have to do it lefty. Ooh, he's so close to this. I don't know if he can. He's banking it. it down tail, using the seven. Great shot. Did it really well. Now, here he's worried about the jump cue, so he wanted to keep going. Hmm. <laughs> I think two rails is the shot here, but I like really taking one rail at it right here, trying to give myself a chance to make it. Two rails, you're really not giving yourself any chance to make it at all. There is a little bit of a separation that could happen, but I really think percentage-wise, you got to go one rail right at right. it. Because if you hit it full, too, you might knock it around. You're going to have a lot of speed on it, and you should, you should hit it about 95% of the time, so 90% of the time. Well, I think if the eight's not there, then the two railer is okay too, because you got the cross corner bank, the nine in the side. Yeah, yeah. 
but if he kicks two rails, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to kick with a lighter speed, trying to send the cue ball up to the end rail, maybe create some kind of distance, something like that. Wow, how much of this six can he see? I didn't think he could see enough to even jump. Oh, yeah, that's I thought that's a mental error there. Because, I mean, what else? you got to hit everything perfect, cutting the six to have any chance of getting... He wasn't trying to make the six, like, straight back no, or nothing, uh, so... He didn't, certainly didn't have enough for that. Plus, when it's bouncing... Now, he missed an easy kick on a, on a shot earlier where Scott played a really nice safe on the two ball. Maybe that had something in his mind, maybe, about not wanting to kick at the ball again. Now looking for his biggest lead of the match at three games. Seven to four. This guy means business. I can see he, he made up, made a statement very early. Lou wants to take a timeout, but it's not his inning. And you know what Skyler said. I don't blame him. I would have tried to take a timeout too. Well, Sky recovering after. Uh, Trying to play position on a six ball. Really made a nice touchy shot on the six, banking it back down and covering up the cue ball really nicely. And uh, yeah. And them getting ball in hand because of it. Looks like he has a shot. And he's got a nice shot on the one. Very natural to come across for the three. Got a little congestion uh, coming down table for the four, but. You just feel like this could be the shot, the game winner right here. If you just roll this in, you, you feel like you're supposed to get out. Yeah, just like a four or five inch bump off that second rail. That's about the speed for the cue ball. No reason to go back and forth all the way. Smooth. Yeah, just that's it there. Yeah, nice very shot. focused. Oh, and I got away from him a little bit because he's a righty, so he's going to be stretched. He's got the perfect angle to come straight down the table. Don't let up on it. Go ahead and get to this second rail. That's the best way to shoot that shot when you're stretched because you always lose a little bit of power. So yeah. when you're stretched on drawing be all, or anything you're doing, following the ball a little bit on the cut there. Make sure you put a hair more on it just consciously... Uh, because you got to know you're not going to have as much power when you're stretched. This is a three-railer here. Yeah, that's a shot you learn to get comfortable with. Worked the cue ball pretty close. Picked up a little angle. It's a nice shot. And I think he can hit this with a high ball now. Catching that angle and coming straight in between the eight and the six. That speed there. Yeah. Beautiful. And he can roll this in. The seven goes in all the pockets, pretty much. So if you want to go past it for the corner, or if you, which I think may be okay, goes in that other corner by the nine as well. Not being lazy. Goes around and double checks his angle. This could be a huge break and run out. You know, he's been pretty effective on the break overall. It's just a couple of times he had a miss. He, he got mispositioned the last game to where he didn't have a break and run there as well. 
another time breaking and having to play safe on the two ball. So he's consistently made the one. Now a big nine ball for an eight to four lead. Ooh, hit it to the top part of the pocket. Eight for it is. Nice time for a break and run out there by Skyler Woodward. And it's not even the score so much as the message it sends to your opponent that I'm not faltering, so anything that you do that's a little bit wrong, and now that you're behind, I will bury you. Skyler's TPA clawing up there near 900, way over pro status now. Won the last four racks in a row. And interesting, he's actually got a lower percentage than Lou. It's just a matter of some opportunities on the break and, and Lou not uh, not meeting the requirements, you know, uh, not in compliance on uh, three different breaks. So, <laughs> Yes. And I believe the other one that he broke, he broke and ran out when he was in compliance. Mm -hmm. Jason Shaw up nine to four now, just uh, pretty relentless, it seemed like, at all, all times. But we got some matches coming up this week. Anybody that bought the week-long stream package, they're going to get their money's worth. You can see Sky with a 625 as far as his break percentage. Now Skyler hitting him overall with much more speed than Mr. Lou. Definitely trying to make the one more than the corner ball. Okay, he made the corner ball, I think. Yeah. And the one's going to dress up a little bit. Oh, yeah. What a nice starter here. A little bit elevated, but. Yeah, this is about as good as you can hope for. If you, don't, if you want something better than this, you'll have to wait a long time. That's right. He's going to have to come down a ways, though, and he needs a little angle on the two to get to the three. Okay, nice shot. Nice shot, but that, that that's going to need to get to the side rail or get a little bump off the six. Oh, wow. He hit it nicely, but that little bump off the six is what really gave him the angle to get over easily for the three, and it's not much angle, but I think it's enough, Mark. Yeah, and he's playing well, so you're going to have occasional bump that favors you. Well, instead of drifting down and maybe getting elevated, oh, oh my. Yeah, he really didn't and, need to get that far. Yeah, he over. went for too much there, in my opinion. Yeah, he hates that because he feels like he gave this game away after making the good opening shot and getting the angle. Yeah, and he's got to realize the pockets are a little soft, so he can shoot to three with a little angle and be okay. It's always about getting to that next ball unless you just have to do something more. Yeah, I really feel by trying to get uh, perfect on the three, it was a little bit of laziness. I think he should have worked harder on the three, made sure he made the two. But you and I have the advantage of years of missing it both ways. So. Right. <laughs> Oh, uh -oh. Miss Q, uh -oh. and, and that was a little bit of that movement you were talking about early in the match, a little bit of the body, a little bit of the head move there. And like we'll always say that, that, you know, the head movement and the body movement doesn't cost you. You shoot it 10 times, it might not only cost you, but one out of 10, but that one can be huge. Right. And we know he was using side spin on there just a little bit to try to help hold it because it squirted, and that's why he missed the ball by so far. If he would have been using center ball, even though it miscued, he would have still pocketed the ball. Most likely. Most likely, yeah. He could have been trying to hit center and hit off a little bit, and that, that'll do it, too. Yeah, if but you move your body, that yeah, can exactly. happen, too. Yeah, exactly, so there's that, uh, I just there's felt a like lot was, of variables, you know? I felt like he was trying to twist it a little bit. Yeah, hold right. it with a little yeah. bit of right, yeah, exactly. But it was definitely the, the flinch and the swing that got uh, the, the miscue. I don't... Hard to believe it was something to do with chalk or anything like that. 
when your opponent is playing really well, you tend to flinch a little more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's he like, flinched Whoo. jumping out of his chair when he <laughs> saw Sky miss that two ball. He didn't expect that. Right. So, or he didn't flinch getting out of his chair. Maybe I could say that. Kind of funny too. Nine four can be close, or nine four can be far apart. The, the psychological aspect of this nine four, it's far apart. Mm -hmm. Skyler Woodward, nine, and rolling. He's still a little shaking his head about that two ball. He knows that could have cost him not only this game but many more. So, mm -hmm. so again, he'll he'll. You know, store that in his thought process as as far as like keep the run going. Don't don't get lazy on a ball right. as far as trying to do too much. It's a real subtle thing, but what Jeremy's alluding to is that when you make a mistake and your opponent gets a cheap win, and oftentimes these guys are so good they break and run out nearly thirty percent of the time. So not just that game, but another point three games. Then they may break, make a ball on the break, hook you. Now you're kicking for your life, and it can quickly end up being three or four. Well, games. you're out of control of the of what's going on. So, and that feeling after after a mistake that you would say is uh, that was more of the mind than the body, and you, you made it to where it was missable the way you shot it. So, all right, unforced you know, errors I determine. Tell, yeah, I tell people, you know, you're going to have to make enough great shots playing pool. Don't. Don't try to make one into a better shot. You know, if he would have slammed that in and shoved it over, it would have looked better. It would have felt better maybe even to him. I don't, but at this level, it's not about a confidence thing. It's about playing what is efficiently correct. Now, looky here. <laughs> Made the one on the side. It was a compliant break, and he has a good shot to start this run with. And he may have to play short side on this four ball. He's made the one in the three, but he's got a rough angle and on the rail to get... Uh, to get for the four in the corner, I believe. Now he's looking to see if he can go right in between the, or maybe soft roll it and cut the four. Is that what he's looking at? Or maybe even banking the four. We know Skyler is a great banker of the, of the ball. So. Yeah, he's right in the same league as Billy Thorpe. Comes to that. Great shot. Yeah, Perfect good speed. speed. He and doesn't use, have to bank it now. He can cut no, it. And using the right side of the pocket. Uh, One of the things that really helps Billy Thorpe is that he's so committed to his bank shot. It's never like he's thinking, well, maybe I'll get safe if I miss it. No, it's all, you know, all out. Okay, this will be interesting. He's really got to float it to hold it for the proper side of the five. What a great shot. I think he's still gone too far, maybe. See, that's such, such a tough shot for it to hold on this table, especially. Because when it comes at that angle into that last rail, it falls downward more rather than kind of tightening up with that English. It goes downward, so that speed, it's difficult. Boy, this is, this is a tough spot to be in. I really wouldn't object if he tried to go uh, firm speed and attack between the... Seven nine. Yeah, because if you, if you hit the nine, you're gonna get some help. Well, I think he can draw straight up and straight back down. I think I thought he could. Maybe he doesn't have enough angle for that. Right, you got to bend it so much. It takes so much pace out of the cue ball. I'd rather have the high velocity going into the clutter. But can he hit that? Is the side pocket not involved uh, with the cue ball with a high natural high? No, I'm not saying English? high. No, no, I'm saying draw and go between the three and the seven. Oh, okay. The, or the nine and the seven. I'm sorry. You know, just the, like, the bigger type of three rail or past the side pocket. This That's what I would. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, is it going to hook him? It is. Hmm. When you, it takes so much pace out of the ball when you bend it that much that if you do collide it into anything, it just dies. Or if you got the three railer coming around there and hit that, it's still got some kill power with it. Right. Running power, right? Yep. Well, now another situation where Sky could have run out. But uh, a little unfortunate to get hooked the way it happened. 
You're gonna go for the cut or bank it around like that? What a great hit. Oh my. How much control was that? Look at this. Huh? Wow, it kept going, but it's still pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he has to play safe or go after the nine if he's suicidal. No, he's gotta play safe. Uh, he's gonna end up putting the six on the back rail. If he goes after the nine, he's gotta elevate and draw the six, uh, so he's, he can't do that and, and follow, I don't think. Yeah, he realizes. And he's going towards a scratch if he does that. This is real ugly. So he's just got to take his medicine here, knowing it's not going to get any nicer. He's, he's got to try and bank the six to the side rail and let it fall to the end rail and run the cue ball back up table. But the problem is this guy's going to have a good opportunity to put him back exactly like they yeah. are now or, or very similar. I almost rather go one rail and let the six come all the way down here on the end rail. Well, that's what I mean. It's oh. going to come, but it's going to be open is my point. Right, right, it's right. going to be hard to hook him. So, he, you know, this guy's going to just chip the six probably and do the same thing. That's ooh, This could be point. even worse. Oh, that was almost really bad. <laughs> that would have bounded back towards the six. Well, now he's actually made it a little tougher on Sky as far as that chip shot I was talking about and run the cue ball back behind the eight. So... Of course, better than straight in the corner, but now Sky see he's got concerns. If I chip it, I'm shooting the six towards the corner, and if I make it and run the cue ball back behind the eight, it may, I may snooker myself on the seven. Mm -hmm. So everything's gotten a little funny all of a sudden. He's going. He's going for it, I believe, to the other pocket. Oh, he's trying to overcut it. He decided to shoot at his hole. <laughs> kind of overcooked that a little bit. Yeah, it's going to have a lot of pace, and that makes things, again, a little bit funny. Because he can't just hit this with a high ball. He'll he'll go right by the eight and scratch, possibly. And with left English, he's going away from the eight. So does, does he think he can just hit this and come right back up? Maybe he can. Okay, so now he's going to have to cut the eight a little bit, which shouldn't be a problem, but much more work than we anticipated. Like Mark said, if he wouldn't have overran the six to the seven, he's real nice on the seven. He just kind of stops his ball. Good shot. Definitely under some pressure. Cole Brothers looking on from over the way. Lou captures the nine ball. Trails in the match nine games to five. And he's now taking, taking his, his uh, choice of a timeout. All right, everybody, we'll be back shortly. Player timeout. Okay, everybody, we're back. Lou breaking, trailing five nine. And I'm real inter interested to see uh, his break because I think because of the non-compliant breaks he tried to pick up the pace and he wasn't comfortable doing so because he didn't hit him as well all right he went back to the lighter one he made the corner ball but mm -hmm. there's that non-compliant break again and a bank shot <laughs> yeah tough one though tough one to get gain position too he may fan this in and cut it in because there's a little bit of area to yeah. get position cutting it maybe I think you have to really be comfortable with the table to be playing the real lighter cut break. Uh, you have, you know, mm -hmm. you have to know it's just there. Skyler's looking at just fanning this in and staying down table and taking the cut on the two. Well, that's what I was saying. That there is some areas there to get. There's not a lot of big ones, but. Okay, that's a nice shot and really perfect speed. Wow. Just got the most out of it. 
He's getting an out. He's not out of the woods. He's got another thin one, and this right. one's going to be going up and down the table. Some guys will tell you they've been playing a lot, but I'm, I can tell with Skyler, he's been playing a lot of pool. Yeah. Just the way he's going at these shots. Totally comfortable. Nice shot. Perfect speed, it looks like to me. Another pure hit. Perfect. Like, doesn't have to contend with anything now other than don't get elevated over the nine. Five barely passes the eight, I believe. I don't think he's got a full pocket. Just be clear cut on your decision, that's for sure. I'm going with the high ball. Trying to get some angle on the four so he can come back and not have to deal with any of that eight ball. Come back for the five, either for the other corner or the side pocket. So a nice shot there. It sure was. He accomplished a lot with that. And he made it look easy too, Mark. Okay, so he's going to be short side on the six. That's okay, though. that to either lay on the rail or bounce a hair more. Looks like he's dealing with a point maybe now. Just, I think he's okay, but should be all right. He can go a little further with the cue ball to gain a little more angle and stay off the rail. Okay, decided to use a little speed. Gonna have to draw the cue ball again from the eight to the nine. Oh, nice hit there. The mm -hmm. half draw with power rather than try to be the effective draw that might get away from you. Oh, nice out there. Yeah, great out. Thin yeah. in the one end, thin in the two end. Perfect speed on all those, those just light hit shots. I mean, just really well done. Playing awesome, and the non compliant break has cost three or four games for uh, Lou. Skyler charging out there, putting a lot of pressure on his opponent. This win would put Skyler at the top four in the winner's side. The final top, eight. Final, final eight. eight in yeah, the winner's side. There's 16. So. Yeah, they played. This is the fourth round. So. That means he, the worst he could do is nine through 12 then. Yeah. Skyler's last break of the match. Here we go. Oh, the one ranged into well, the, the side. The two's got a lot of speed, though, so if it doesn't go in, and it does, but he's got a nice shot on the three. Wow. And I like that as far as you're going to be complying, compliant on, on the break, you know? Yeah. So. In compliance. Sky almost up to 900. Shooting at 880. Yeah, he's playing a great match. He's kept the pressure on from the start. Uh, he's got to go to the end rail and back up. So it'll be interesting to see if he plays this with right English and kind of wraps the corner up there. We're hitting the top rail and then the side rail. He can play it with a straight high ball too. But then he could get a little thin. Yeah, get on the six somehow maybe too. He's going to get on the right. He's going to hit it with right and come towards the four like that. Okay, there was one way or the other. You wanted to not be in that little no man's land on the left side of the table. What a good shot that was though. Yeah. Real confident. Being aggressive coming towards the four.
You could bump the five here, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't know any better, just go into the bottom side of the five. That'll bring the cue ball below the five and everything on towards the six. So, Spun of the round. Nice shot. Nice tempo. Stayed down. And didn't overhit it. No, that it's nice yeah, four or five, six inch bump off the rail with the cue ball, which always makes things, everything easier. All right. He can just check this up with a little left, come down to the center of the table, and he's golden. And this is going to wrap up our match here. And Sky Woodward's going to join Shane Van Boning as two Americans, at least in the final 16, uh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, final eight on the winner's side. Right. right. Yeah, final right. eight. You know, some people might say it was a non-compliant break, but uh, this guy really took advantage of every little a aspect, and you couldn't criticize any component of his game throughout. And we didn't get to see much of Mr. Lou, but what we did see, we could tell he's one heck of a player, and both of them will be back soon. Well, uh, normally I like to uh, thank uh, our fans, and I will, but I also want to thank you, Jeremy, because you provide a lot of great insights. And uh, much appreciated. We got Raw Hanna on the floor. He's going to be with Skyler Woodward. So that's our time for this time. Till next time, so long. This is Raw Hanna with Aki Stats on the Wire Crave Media. This is Skyler Woodward. What a great exhibition you put on right there, Sky. Um, yeah, you know, uh, played pretty good. I, I made a few mistakes in the beginning, but uh, I got through it, and I, I got uh, three or four games there to get a good lead. Uh, broke good a few times to get it, and he he broke broke kind of bad to give me the chances to get up, which was a little lucky for me, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All right, so you need to teach the rest of Team USA that break. What What's the one thing that has changed from your game since I've known you from Moscone Cup? What's the thing that changed from boot camp to now? Um, my, my stroke's a little better. Johan has uh, developed my stroke for sure. You know, uh, used to have more of a, like a bad punch stroke, and I yeah, still do, but Johan has definitely brought out the best uh, or better, you know. Still not there, but getting there. You heard that, still not there, but getting there, sky's the limit. AccuStats, raw hand, stay tuned. We got another match for you. K bye. Yeah, K bye.
Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with the revolutionary X-Shock stampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.